Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, May 27, 2021. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, we have much of the same thing we had yesterday for one thing. There's more, but for one, we had a very narrow ranging day. It was quiet. The volume was light, and basically it was the machinery that was trading the markets rather than a whole list of market participants. We'll get to some of the intraday stuff a little bit later on because there is some importance to what happened intraday, both in the morning and both in the afternoon. Let's take it from the big picture perspective. We'll kind of pan back a little bit, and then we'll drill down to some other charts. Big picture, trend is your friend until she throws you out the second story window. That's item number one, that hasn't changed. Basically, all week long, they've been eating time off the clock. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, today. So think about what happened from the close of last week to this week. The close of last week, they couldn't get above and close above the 20 period moving average. We're just talking about the daily chart right now. Now, this week, they pop above on Monday, and they basically trade sideways Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They're eating time off the clock right underneath the all-time highs. So everything that we know about how the market works, the majority of the time, tells us what? It tells us they're building energy to bust through the highs yet again and continue in melt-up mode. That's the duck That's what the market is telling us at present. But wait, there's more. What you'll see later inside the numbers that there are some important numbers that the market needs to get over and stay over to start that next leg higher. They tried it this morning. It looked like they were going to do it. Trick and company showed up and they didn't do it. So we're underneath those numbers now. Guess what? Right at the end of the day, they made an attempt one more time to get to that spot. Here's a five minute chart just to give you the imagery of what happened. So just in the last couple of minutes of the day, they make a run all the way up to and over 420. That's not the number, it's slightly higher. You'll see it when we get to inside the numbers. They make an attempt, they actually come up penny short and they sell off immediately in like the last minute of the day. In the spirit of being dramatic, Here is that last minute of the day. They made the attempt, and then they hit him into the close. Now, when that happens, all in all, from a big picture perspective, when you're looking at the daily chart, you don't see this. You don't know that that happened. I'm looking at the inner workings of the market. I know that they made an attempt to get to a specific spot, to try and close above a specific spot. And then guess what? They were smacked down at the end of the day. It was like a Wilson, like a stuffed, like somebody making a jump shot and they got stuffed. From minute to minute, it doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot when you're not talking about enormous moves. But when they do that thing at the end of the day, I take stock in that. I note that. That becomes a puzzle piece and it's on the table. Are we expecting a big move leading into the holiday weekend? Well... There's one more day left, and maybe they have a Friday floater. That's an opportunity for the melt-up. Maybe we get issued a Friday surprise, and they're trading lower. Now, the activity at the end of the day would signal if, and it's a big if, if they're going to have a move. That little shenanigan move at the end of the day speaks to lower prices. We don't know that that's going to happen. It's Friday leading into a three-day holiday weekend. The volume is very, very light. There's a lack of market participation. All that stuff lends itself to a Friday floater. However, there's always a never know. You never know. Maybe there's a news item. We don't know what you're going to wake up to. So we log it in as an awareness based on the activity at the end of the day. If you wake up tomorrow and nothing's happening, you forget about it. If you wake up tomorrow and they're trading lower, you say, all right, they gave us the tip off yesterday. Now they're trading lower. 
What's really going on? Where are they going? Well, I'll have that number even before we wake up in the morning. I already have the number. And maybe the number's not that important because maybe they just run a test or not even to the line in the sand. Where's the line in the sand? 417. Why is that? Because now we're on the 240-minute chart. Nothing's changed on this chart for sure. Nothing changed on the daily chart. Nothing changed on this chart. The low is 417.08. Until or unless they begin closing candles below that low, then all they're doing is running sideways, eating time off the clock, doing what? In a bullish, flaggish formation. That's all they're doing right now. So when you see this stuff on a 240-minute chart and you say, well, all this back and forth is nothing other than running some tests of the low of the breakup candle, and just eating time off the clock. That's all it is. Now, there's a method to the madness, so I want to show you something. So on this 240 chart, what I've done is I've put two lines, one at the low of the breakup candle, and the other at the recent highs or close to it up in this neighborhood above 420. So I just want to point something out. I want to make the case. On the 240 chart, they're not doing anything except eating time off the clock. That's it. Here's a 10 minute chart as an example, 417, 420 and change. And you can see what's going on here. There are some big moves from an intraday perspective, 10, 20, 25, 30 handles from top to bottom in S&P terms. From an intraday perspective, there's certainly trading going on, but it depends on how you're viewing the market. What's your objective? Are you a swing trading type of trader type of person? then you're not concerned with this intraday noise. Are you an intraday trader and never holding anything overnight? Then you are concerned with these intraday moves because that's how you make a living. Everybody has a different objective, and therefore, based on your objective, you're focused on different time frames, different charts. They're doing different things. Let's say, just for argument's sake, that you're swing trading this particular chart for argument's sake. Forget about it's the S&P. It's just a chart. You decided to take a trade based on a pattern. The pattern is they're inside of this breakup candle and they've run a test near the lows close enough. They're eating time off the clock. And ultimately, under normal garden variety conditions using the 80-20 rule, it's going to break to the upside. Doesn't work every time, but it works the majority of the time. So that's the mindset. So the mindset is off of this particular chart, I'm interested in a trade. So it's going to potentially be either a one-day trade. It could be. It could be a multi-day trade. Remember, this is a 240-minute chart. So each day, it basically takes two candles to complete. So while they're eating time off the clock, this is several days. That's exactly what's been going on. So after the thing is in development, that's when you say, hey, this is getting ready to break to the upside. The risk-reward is... I get the move to the upside or they break below the breakup candle low for 17 and change. So I don't have to watch that. This is just the concept. We're just talking around things. I don't have to watch that all day long. I can set an alert. I can check in if they're getting down in the neighborhood of 417. I might get concerned. I might want to add to the position. I can just monitor that they're staying inside of that breakup candle low and they're just doing the same thing by eating time off the clock. I can have that mindset as a swing trading type of position. Okay, there's a method to the madness. There's a reason why I went over that. It's based on some recent questions that rolled in that should clear up everything. And if they weren't your questions, which chances are they weren't, Hopefully, you learned something anyway. Maybe a little light bulb went on. How about a little inside the numbers? We'll begin with the pre-market commentary. We'll circle back to stocks on the move. Happy Thursday. Wake up to a touch of red. Just a touch. We'll believe more when we see it. That turned out to be basically true today. The market didn't do anything. Using the 80-20 rule with a side of garden variety, we're expecting another light volume, quiet day across the market. Maybe there's an early rush for 30 minutes to an hour. Maybe they run a shakeout operation during that period. It's not new, and it's completely normal. Either way, 
Until we see price below 417 in the SPY, it's just back and forth, chop shop formation, eating time off the clock for a continued melt-up. Sound familiar? Now we haven't had the melt-up, but they're still eating time off the clock. Nothing more, nothing less. If you wake up one morning, for example, Friday or one day next week, and they're trading below 417, look out below, they've opened the trap door. Therefore, below 417, and that concept is off the table, and we're talking the other side. All right, let's move along, see what else we have. There wasn't a whole lot going on throughout the day, as you can imagine by seeing the chart. Narrow range, not a lot of activity. They sucked the volatility out of the market. Therefore, they sucked the trading opportunities out of the market. They're fighting the same general area. Should come as no surprise. 4,200 in the ES, 420 in the SPY. That's where they finished the day. They started the day fighting it. They finished the day fighting it. Above is bullish and below is the same routine we've been seeing. We'll let them go, get the thing open, trade out for a while before we get the handle on the early storyline. If they continue to drive up north, we've got 420 and a quarter above and they'll run. Now, that's really the number that was my line in the sand from a melt-up operation perspective. 421.75 to 422 and a quarter, that would be the target if they were to sustain price above 420 and a quarter. Why not 420? Why was it 420 and a quarter? That was my number. Let me show you. Now, 420 and a quarter, and you can see what happened. The opening print of the day was slightly below. 420.17. They tried to get above. They tried to make a push. And then they failed. Once they failed, they came back for a retest. They hung around for a little while. And that was the end of it. They made that little run at the end of the day to try and get there. In my opinion, that's what they were trying to do. Get to 420 and a quarter. Came up short. And look at that sell in the last minute of the day. That's generally speaking a tell. We'll see what happens when we wake up Friday morning. But that's generally what happens when you see that shenanigan stuff at the end of the day. How much weight do you want to put in it? Not a whole lot of weight. Again, the large majority of the time, we're going to get a Friday floater. That's the way it works, especially leading into a holiday weekend. You set up for what's normal, and you adjust for what's not. If you're a hitter in baseball, you're looking fastball, you adjust to the off-speed stuff. Inside that 240 chart and the other ones, it's all the same, but I'm using the 240 chart for example purposes. Inside that breakup candle low, it's normal. It's looking fastball. You wake up Friday morning and they've thrown a curveball and they're trading below 417. That's the other thing. That's what you adjust for. Let's see what else we have as the day got underway. Can a trader ride the market up? Yes. But the risk is below 420 and a quarter, and it will be a fake out and a pie in the face. It's an aggressive trade back below 420 and a quarter on candle closes, and it's wrong for the time being. Let's go explain that one. You know the thing, right of the vertical today's activity. So what we're saying is, as they're starting to push up, if they're going to stay above 420 and a quarter, maybe today's the day they begin the melt-up operation out of that bullish flaggish pattern on the 240 chart we keep talking about but below 420 and a quarter and that's off the table so here's what that was for traders that want to take the ride and there are plenty and there are a lot of times when that will work that type of trade they know what the number is this way if they have to lose on the trade what's going to happen they're going to lose small and fast once they got below and this kind of a candle when you see this all in one shot. That's a big candle in comparison to the other ones. When they do something like that, that tells you there's been somewhat of a character change in the market. So guess what? They get below and all of a sudden, what happened? The same spot becomes resistance. First it's support, then it's resistance, then it's support, then it's resistance. That's why I like to call them important numbers because if you call it support, when price is above, are you aware that it's the same thing on the way back down. Not all numbers work like that, but a lot of the numbers work like that. All right, let's go further. And by the way, I had a little screw job in plan. We'll get to stocks on the move later. But by the way, 
as I scroll up, pause the video, read the stuff, go back to the charts and double check the work. The reality is, with the notes today, in hindsight, what I can do is just scroll up, you can pause the video and read the notes, you know the result. The market didn't do anything. Here, just to put this thing in imagery format, 1026, a picture is worth 100 words. And what do you have? You have a bull flag pattern working on a 15 minute chart. Where does it go bad? It goes bad below the low. Here it is after the fact. So that is the candle right here at 1015, ending at 1015, and you can see what happened. That big candle down here kind of wiped out the concept for the day, and then the rest is kind of history. You have to have a program. You have to have a plan going into a trade. I'm gonna take this trade because of X. If X changes, or they get below Y, the trade is off the table. That's the way all trades have to work. If you don't have an exit plan before getting into the trade, don't get into the trade. Let's move along, let you read the notes, go back to the charts, double check the work. 1051, here comes Trick and Company to jerk things around. That's what that candle started changing the character of the day. You don't know when these things are gonna come out of the woodwork. That's why we have to know our numbers. If you're in a trade and they start doing that stuff, and they get below certain stuff, and you know about the certain numbers not to get below, you have to exit the thing. 420 and a quarter is the number of importance, obviously. Back above, they'll start all over again. Running a test would be normal and in the cards. Let's get the concept of where that was. That was the 1134 post. Here's the candle ending 1135. Running a test of 420 and a quarter would be normal. What did they do? They ran a test of 420 and a quarter. How you doing? It's good to have a tour guide. Read the notes, double check the work, go back to the charts. There's valuable information here every single day. Stocks on the move. We have a couple of candidates that say jump target. Everything else says open where entry hit is, the second column to the right. I think you can only see the cutoff column. Anyway, the point is, that nothing hit its price objective or entry target as we would want it to be, but we will take a look at a couple of charts, RLGY and PLAN. The rest of them were off the board. Remember, when they suck the volatility out of the market, they take opportunity away from traders. So here's what happened with RGLY or RLGY as we read from left to right. This one kind of stinks because they open the day at 1803, just pennies below my number of 1807. So they ripped it up real quick. The high of 1836 does the deal and then some. Doesn't feel like a lot or doesn't look like a lot, but on an $18 stock, that's more than you're looking for for a base hit. That just is what it is. Traders are taking a different type of share size with an $18 stock than they're taking with a $50 or $100 or $150 stock. So that same 20 or 30 cents has the same meaning based on a different price of the stock. Then, so that was a no trade. Then it comes down to the second level, 1749. And that one worked. They hung around. They bantered back and forth for the remainder of the day. But that did provide a base hit opportunity for any trader that was looking for a base hit. This one was a little bit in the heartbreaker camp. Anaplan, P-L-A-N. Opening print, 4647, my number, 4647. Now, maybe some traders jumped in, but what I did was I pulled the order as it got close by the opening bell, and then they opened on the number, they took off, and I just got left at the altar. It just happens, life of a trader. Here's a chart with the pre-market activity. So here you could see 9.15 or 9 o'clock, and then they started coming down in the 9.15 candle, and that's when I pulled the order because... I don't know what's gonna happen when they're opening on the number, below the number, a penny above the number. If they were up here, if they were up at 48 or something, fine, I would have left it in. Some traders, that's fine. They'll buy it right up at the open, on the number, below the number, above the number, they don't care. I get that. I follow my own specific set of rules. Everybody is different. Everybody should have their own set of rules. If your rule says, be a cowboy or a cowgirl, that's fine, those are your rules. My rules say I treat it as a business 
And if something looks different than it looked five minutes earlier, I want to see more. Case in point, this one. They could have been nicer, and they could have done this thing in the 935 candle, and that would have got everybody in, and everybody would have got a nice rocket ride. But they didn't do that. Life of a trader. That's what it would have looked like had they did it five minutes later. The high was 5114, 4647 entry wasn't to be for me. Follow through over in Camp IWM. Yesterday, they got above the convergence of these moving averages, and you can see what's going on here. They're busting out of what could be viewed as some kind of a triangle pattern. Now, this one is a little bit manufactured, but if I did that, you could see where when they run out of time, they have to go in one direction or the other. These lines aren't perfect. I just did this from a hypothetical standpoint. What was the number that we were saying is the number that they need to get above to make something happen for the bull case? Well, guess what? It was this number here, 225.67. Where did they close today? 225.65. Any accidents or coincidences? You have to chuckle, you have to scratch your head, and you have to say, yup, this is pretty much the way the market works. I didn't want to have to go here, but I'm going here. It goes back to Joe's indicator shop. How's Joe's indicator shop or any indicator found at Joe's indicator shop going to give you the numbers? Where is that information? Every indicator under the sun is looking back at what the market did and using a formula to project what the market's going to do. Yet it has to take some kind of an average or smoothing process or whatever to make that determination, to come out with that formula. Well, guess what? They don't work. How many indicators that you buy for $49.95 or $99.95 or whatever the price of those indicators are, how many of them have actually made anybody money? Post it under the video. I want to see which one it is. Name names. So what happens, by the way, if they close Friday above that high? Well, guess what? That's bullish, isn't it? It is, and it opens the door to run a test of this high. Because running a test of this high creates a different scenario, or potentially takes a scenario off the table. Remember, what we have here, potentially, is a set of lower highs. So we have the high. We have a lower high, and we still have a lower high. Regardless whether or not they get above here, it's just a different thing that we have working. We have to look at everything. We have to be the umpire calling balls and strikes. We may have a bullish thing going on from a short-term perspective, but until and unless they eclipse this high right here, there's still going to be that lower high scenario working. So we have to consider everything. All the information, all the data. This is big data. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Pretty simple stuff. We keep talking about the same thing. We're going to keep talking about the same thing because that's the thing that kept the thing working in the bullish fashion that it is. Now, back above all the moving averages, so they're starting to break apart this bearish thing that was going on. They're getting back above the 20 period moving average, pushing above. But what we were talking about before I started messing with the chart is as long as they stay above this breakup candle low, then they're okay. They ran a test, and now they're still pushing above. So it was all about staying above this breakup candle low. Isn't that the way the market works? Doesn't matter what chart we're looking at. Doesn't matter it says transports, could say S&P, could say anything we want, IWM. This is the way the market works. I don't care what anybody says. I've showed it to you for years. I've showed it to you thousands and thousands of times. All charts act and react the same way. I show you the whole kit and caboodle in the lazy e-mini trader. This is just one of the things. So net-net, transports, bullish. Cues, folks out in Silicon Valley, we reading anything into this? Nah, they're just eating time off the clock up here. Doesn't really matter that they're above here, below here. They're eating time off the clock right here. If they stop doing that, they're either going to go this way or this way. But the reality is, when I look at this from a daily chart perspective, here's what I see. Here's the low. Here's the high. They're in a range. And guess what? They're right in the middle of the range. 
Now, they're above all the moving averages, so that's bullish. But they're in the middle of a range, so you don't know which way they're going to go. If you had to pick one, you would say, well, they're above all the moving averages, they're eating time off the clock, generally speaking, using the 80-20 rule, when they're eating time off the clock and it's bullish in an uptrend above all moving averages, the propensity is going to be to have another move higher. That's just the way things work. It's not a guarantee it's going to work. It's the way things work the majority of the time. What about the financials, XLF? Anything interesting going on here? No, they're bullish. They're just riding up the 20 period moving average. That's it. It's in an uptrend, in an uptrending tape going higher, period, full stop. And it stays that way until they stop going higher. Below 37.20 and they stop going higher, at least for the time being. Until that happens, they're going higher. Smash Mouth, very similar, almost identical to the Qs, eating time off the clock, trying to push up. Same story, above all the moving averages, it's bullish. Eating time off the clock, that's bullish. And it's bullish eating time off the clock because it's following a move higher. So they made a move higher, they stopped at a way station to eat some time off the clock, and we're waiting for a continuation move. If it fails, it fails. But normally, it's going to have a continuation move in the northern direction. That's generally the way things work. Once again, get below the moving averages again, and the story changes. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. True and accurate information. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.